when science deniers attack you instead of your evidence. Welcome back to Flick Friday, where we explore the tactics science deniers use to avoid dealing with inconvenient facts. Today we're diving into the L category, logical fallacies, and specifically one of the most common, the ad hominem attack. Ad hominem literally means to the person in Latin. Instead of addressing your evidence or argument, they attack you personally. It's the intellectual equivalent of a playground bully who can't think of a comeback, so they just say you stink. There are several flavors of ad hominem. There's the straightforward personal attack, calling someone stupid or ugly. Typical blonde. Then there's the circumstantial attack, where they claim your personal circumstances make you biased. No surprise a pharma company is pro-vaccines. And guilt by association, where they dismiss your argument because of who you're connected to or who agrees with you. Hitler was vegetarian too. Perfect example. Under my last Flick Friday video, someone commented, What's the odds the creator of this hokum has blue hair? They were trying to dismiss my argument by imagining what I might look like. Wrong about the hair colour, by the way, but more importantly, completely irrelevant to the facts I presented. This tactic is everywhere in public discourse. Donald Trump famously used nicknames like Sleepy Joe and Crooked Hillary, calling opponents losers and deranged rather than addressing policy positions. You are a rude, terrible person. Ad hominem attacks are dangerous in science communication because they work. Our brains are wired to make quick judgments about people, and these attacks exploit that shortcut. They shift the conversation away from evidence and towards personality. Women in science face this disproportionately. Research shows female scientists and communicators receive far more personal attacks about their appearance, competence and character, rather than substantive criticism of their work. But here's the thing. Even if someone is genuinely unpleasant, rude, or has terrible taste in hairstyles, that doesn't make their scientific evidence wrong. Data doesn't care about your personality. So, if you see someone attacking the messenger instead of the message, you'll know exactly what tactic they're using. And more importantly, you'll know they probably can't actually refute the evidence. That's this week's Flick Friday. What other logical fallacies have you spotted in science debates? Let me know in the comments.